what makes a relationship valuable? Being a connector. So what, what does that mean? Being a connector, all, simply put, means does this person bring other people into your life? Uh, do, does this person, are they clicky? Do they herd their friendships? Do they share friendships? Do they try to add value to, to your life? I remember when I was in high school, uh, and I definitely like the man that I am now a lot better than the man that I was in high school, and hopefully I'll say that in the future to my current self, but when I was in high school, I remember having one group of friends. I played football. I had some friends in football, and then I had another group of friends that were through class or through soccer or whatever, and I remember thinking, oh, this kid from football would totally get along with this kid from soccer. But I would not introduce them to each other because I was worried I had judgmental friends and I was worried that if I introduced them to each other and they didn't like each other, it would reflect poorly on me. Now, that, that's partially from my own insecurity, but it's partially from the people I was hanging out with. They were judgmental. So, of course, I was going to worry about them judging me, bringing them together. And I have since realizing that how valuable being a connector is i've since realized how ingrained it is into me to how uncomfortable i feel introducing two people because it's like if they don't absolutely hit it off i messed up so for most of my life i refrained from introducing people and then as i leaned into god i leaned into the church and you know god to matthew 7 2 for in the same way you judge others you will be judged and with the measure you use it will be measured to you in real genuine church environments where people genuinely know christ they genuinely try hard not to judge. Of course, we're not perfect. And when I started getting in these church environments and I started being with people who made it an absolute priority not to judge, and then uh, I finally found the freedom of connecting people. And then I got into these entrepreneurship environments where people wanted to be connected and I would connect people. And then as I started to make it a habit in my life of connecting people, I realized that people associated me with being a connector and they would start connecting me to people and it's super important that if you're gonna do this it depends on how you react if someone introduces me to someone and i am like i hate i act like i hate that person or i'm rude to that person then no one's ever going to want to introduce me to someone so it's been the case in many circumstances where i've been introduced to podcast guests such a blessing i have friends that bring podcast guests to my to my front doorstep. I literally get thrown in group chats. It's like, hey, I have someone for your podcast. Now, a majority of those people ended up coming on my podcast. It's been a blessing. There's been times where I didn't agree with someone, someone that someone subjects to me, where I go, I don't know if I really want this person on my podcast, but I'm not going to make it a big deal. Why did, why did you put me in this group chat with this person? Why did you do this? Because then you're training people not to connect you with others. So no you want to first, when, when, you're, when you're thinking about being the trait, also with all three of these traits, I forgot to mention, with conversation quality, with being a connector and new experiences, don't just look for people with the traits. Attract them by taking up the traits yourself. You always attract people with the same. I don't want to say that. That's not true. You don't always attract people with the same traits. How do I know this? Jesus treated everyone perfectly and, and he was beaten, murdered, and killed. Karma is not real. Uh, you reap what you sow is real. What you reap what you sow says is that if you have good habits, then good things will likely come from those good habits. That That is not the same as karma. You don't 100% the way you treat people 100% reflects. But in general, the traits that you have, we are tribal, we move in groups. The traits that, the traits that you take up are the people you will attract. So when when I'm talking about all these traits, conversation quality, being a connector... Uh, new experiences, you want to ask yourself, how do I embody those traits? Because if you embody those traits, then it will be much easier to find people with those traits. Uh, so anyways, back to being a connector, you set the standard for being a connector. If you're not open to, to being connected and you act rude when a friend introduces you to someone, then you are not a connector. Likewise, people only started connecting me after I was connecting others. I don't know what came first, if I connected someone or if someone connected me, but it was, it was once I made the habit of regularly connecting other people that I now get regularly connected by other people. It's not like a, a keep, keeping score thing. It's just, it just happens. And I've 
again, this whole, this whole podcast is about what makes a relationship valuable. I've gone out of my way to look for people who carry these three traits. A connector is a huge one. So if you've never been connected and you've never done connecting, or if you're just curious, what does that look like? How could I do that? Two simple means of doing the connecting. One, phone text message. You just put two people in a group chat with yourself in it and you go, hey, this is my friend Joey. He is an expert in this, this area, or he's very cool. He loves to go rock climbing. Hey, Joey, this is my friend Jacob. Jacob also loves to go rock climbing and he also has an interest in this. You guys should hit it off. Feel free to talk outside of this group chat. Now, the key with connecting is that you wanna connect people who actually make sense to be friends. Uh, if you feel that two people have similar personalities, connect them. If you feel that two people might hit it off rom romantically, connect them. If, if you know that two people have a shared interest, connect them. You both like bike riding. Great. Go on a bike ride together. You both like, you both love Jesus. Great. Come to church with me. That leads us in our second, our second point, which is you connect people by inviting them. Ah. Again, going back to my example in high school, I felt so scared to bring people together because I felt that it was a reflection of me and I didn't want to be judged. Now I bring people together all the time and I don't worry about it. Not because I've completely got, gotten over my fear of judgment. I think that I've made progress toward getting over my fear of judgment, but I, but I don't worry about it because the people I surround myself with are like-hearted individuals. They're, they're people who share the same values and they're not going to even if they don't hit it off with the person I'm connecting them with, they're not going to hold it against me. In fact, they'll probably thank me and, and be gracious about it because this is what I've looked for in my relationships and this is what has made them valuable. So number one trait, conversation quality, what makes a re relationship valuable. Number two trait, connector, being a connector, are you connecting others? Are they connecting me? Uh, being a connector, what makes a relationship valuable? And number three,